now in this board we will discuss uh, discrete fourier transform transform so uh, very important one and listen all the students uh, listen carefully by the fourier transforms uh, whether it is continuous or the discrete and by the lectures of uh, previous fourier transforms uh, uh lectures you can observe whatever we are processing the waves in this way okay all those are uh, i mean uh, from all those uh, wave like uh, structures the periods uh, so whatever we are getting suppose for example the heartbeat uh, the heartbeat uh, is e when we see so all the uh, investigations uh, we are doing doctors also predicting and investigating by seeing these pictures and how the machines the computers generating all this and how they are uh, giving the predictions and analysis upon these types of curves like a sinusoidal sine uh, period waves and uh, cosine uh, cos uh, period waves how all these predictions are uh, done all these analysis are done only because behind that one by the fourier transform mathematical equations they are giving the results they are the background is the fourier transform discrete fourier transform or the fourier transform uh, impulse shifting properties the properties of fourier transform whether it is continuous or a discontinuous and how a missed one in the we were prediction or in the analysis we are recovering by the fourier transforms by the previous lecture and how the aerospace uh, pictures we are analyzing whether we are analyzing predicting only by the image processing subject okay and from this image processing this is covering all the machine learning so from the image processing only we are predicting we are anal uh, analyzing every picture the weather forecast uh, the aerospace nanospace everything everything uh, and computer processing everything okay so for this one computer graphics is the base and from that image processing defined all the solutions uh, and given all the solutions for all the fields and it is extended and more clearly extended by the machine learning and from here to deep learning okay so listen carefully the image processing subject and understood the operations behind them and uh, grasp the importance of the subject now in this board we will discuss discrete fourier transform of uh, in this slide we are discussing for one variable so for the one variable we are defining dft f of mu which is the variable is x here it is a discrete if it is a continuous one the variable is small t if it is a continuous one so if it is a discrete one the variable is x so x is equal to 0 to m minus 1 f of x e power exponent power this is common j 2 pi mu x by m where mu values are 0 to m minus 1 and from the Fourier transform, uh, we are defining f of x, original function, which is 1 by m sigma mu from 0 to m minus 1 f of mu exponent power j2 pi mu x by 
m this is common and here the values are 0 to m minus 1 now see this is the dft for one variable now see 2d impulse shifting for continuous and for discrete see the from the impulse we are generating shifting property from the shifting property we are generating fourier transform so now 2d okay 2d impulse and shifting property for continuous variable the continuous variable is the t variable the impulse we are defining it is a 2d so t comma z uh, delta of t comma z is defined is defined infinity if t is equal to z is equal to zero otherwise it is zero the function is zero and it is the double integral limit from minus infinity to infinity delta of t comma z with respect to dt dz which is equivalent to one and now uh, this is the impulse and now the shifting property is also double integral of my limit from minus infinity to infinity f of t comma z delta of t comma z with respect to dt dz which is equivalent to f of 0 0 so at the point uh, uh, initial starting origin origin point f of 0 comma 0 if it is at the point initial point this is origin point at the 0 this is initial point at the t naught z naught which is also uh, double integral of limit from minus infinity to infinity because function is defined with infinity f of t comma z delta of t minus t naught comma z minus z naught with respect to dt dz which is f of t naught z naught this is in the case of continuous and f d is in the case of discrete 2d impulse and shifting properties are defined delta of x comma y impulse 1 here it is infinity for continuous for the discrete it is 1 if x is equal to z y is equal to 0 so here it is uh, discrete it is x comma y it is continuous it is t comma z and now we are defining the shifting property sigma double sigma of x uh, and y limit from minus infinity to infinity f of x comma y uh, delta of x comma y which is equivalent to 0 comma 0 at the origin and which is equivalent to x minus x naught and y minus y naught at the initial position these are impulse and shifting properties from those we are now defining the fourier transform so the fourier transform of f of mu comma v is defined as uh, double integral limit from minus infinity to infinity f of t comma z exponent of j2 pi of uh, mu t plus vz with respect to dt dz and from this we are defining this double integral of f of t comma z is equal to double integral of minus infinity to infinity f of mu comma v exponent of j2 pi mu t vz with respect to mu and v d mu dv so fourier transform for the 2d fourier transform is defined now we are defining the sampling so the sampling 2d sampling and 2d sampling theorem we have to define now so the 2d impulse train from is defined as s delta t delta z two periodic functions this is delta z periodic function this is delta t periodic function of uh, 
T comma Z is defined as double sigma of m is equal to minus infinity to infinity n is equal to minus infinity to infinity delta of t minus m into delta t z minus n into delta z this is the two dimensional impulse train formula and all these are the sampling points sampling points from this we are defining 2D sampling and 2D sampling theorem as the basis is a, uh, the basis the basic thing is function f of t comma z is said to be band limited if it is Fourier transform its Fourier transform is zero outside a rectangle established by the interval minus mu max to the mu max and v minus v max to the v max and may it means in this direction and in this direction this is negative and this is positive direction which is that is f of mu comma v is equal to zero for mod mod v mu is greater than mu max and mod v is greater than v max so now the two dimensional sampling theorem based on this is defined as which is a continuous band limited functional uh, the function is defined as uh, represented as f of t comma z and can be recovered with no errors from a set of its samples if the sampling intervals are delta t less than 1 by 2 mu max and delta z is less than 1 by 2 v max this is the two dimensional sampling theorem now as like we after sampling theorem we defining aliasing 2d so this is some sampled picture this is the original one and which is 50 percent original size pixel is deleted 50 percent is deleted so the alias for this 50 percent deleted one is that this one and after upon this we applied a 3 by 3 averaging filter for resizing then we are getting this is the 3 by 3 uh, filter after average filtering operation this is the output and clearly see and observe once the differences of uh, uh, function the pictures and now more patterns what are more patterns uh, more patterns are often an undesired artifact of images produced by various digital imaging and computer graphic techniques it means within the image some undesired artifacts are there so those undefined artifacts we are producing by various digital imaging and computer graphics techniques those patterns are called the more patterns so for example for the more patterns when scanning a half ton picture or a ray tracing a checkered plane this cause of more is a special case of aliasing due to under sampling a fine regular pattern uh, i'll show the example for more patterns see this is this is more patterns all these patterns are collected within the image and i'll show more patterns undesired artifacts are collected so this is the original image c and this is the more pattern formed by incorrectly down sampling okay down sampling the former image 
see here these types of uh, uh, patterns we are not get got from the original image okay so undesired ones undesired artifacts also we collected more patterns now coming to the 2d discrete fourier transform and its inverse which is defined as so sampling and uh, uh, everything is completed means the basic uh, needed uh, theorems are formulated for the fourier transform now we are defining 2d discrete fourier transform and its inverse so discrete fourier transform is defined as sigma x comma y 0 to m minus 1 n minus 1 f of x comma y exponent of minus j 2 pi m mu x by m plus v y by n here the mu value is 0 to m minus 1 v value is 0 to n minus 1 f of x y is a digital image of size m by n with this we are defining inverse inverse discrete Fourier transform which is f of x comma y 1 by is represented as expressed as 1 by mn sigma x is equal to 0 to m minus 1 sigma y is equal to 0 to m n minus 1 f of mu comma v exponent of j2 pi into of mu x by m plus v y by n these two are same uh, for remembering you now coming to the properties of 2d discrete fourier transform uh, the properties of uh, two dimensional 2d uh, discrete fourier transform uh, relationships between spatial and frequency intervals okay so now we will discussing the properties so the relationships between spatial and the frequency intervals are defined as let delta t you know this is periodic function and delta z you know this is another periodic function denote the separations between samples so suppose these are the sample points then delta t and delta z delta means the difference you know this the separation then denote the separations between samples so these separations are denoted by the delta t and delta z then the separations between the corresponding discrete frequency domain variables are given by delta mu and delta v so delta mu is equivalent to 1 by m delta t and delta v is equivalent to 1 by n delta z. This is the relationship between spatial and frequency intervals. Then coming to the translation and rotation property of the 2D DFT. So the translation and rotation property is f of x comma y a power j2 pi mu naught x by m plus v naught y plus by n here m and n are the size of the image you know that and x is the discrete variable you know that j is the uh, j coefficient of the imaginary part pi value you know then which is equivalent to f of mu minus mu naught comma v minus v naught mu naught and v naught are the initial points and f of x minus x naught y minus y naught is equivalent to f of mu v e power minus j2 pi into mu x naught by m plus v y naught by n so using the polar coordinates x is equal to r cos theta y is equal to r sin theta mu is equal to w cos phi 
b is equal to w sin phi. So this is results in the following transform pair f of r comma theta plus theta, theta naught which is equivalent to f of w comma phi plus theta naught. This is translation and rotation property. First property we have discussed is the relationships between the spatial and frequency uh, intervals these two and proper uh, translation and rotation property is this one and this one. Uh, when you got this question you um, just uh, write down this equation simply as simple as you remember no need to write all these things. Then another property another property periodicity so periodicity property means the 2d Fourier transform and its inverse are infinitely periodic write down this and then write down the formula which is f of which is f of x comma y into minus 1 power x plus y is equivalent to f of mu minus m by 2 comma v minus n by 2 just write down this this is periodicity then coming to the symmetry property the symmetry property no need to write down all these uh, symmetry properties of a spatial domain and frequency domain so the uh, symmetry property of 2d dft within the spatial domain are all these and within the frequency domain which is equivalent to spatial domain are these so here uh, we need uh, only few only few uh, symmetry properties pause the video just to see what is uh, real uh, in the spatial domain which is symmetry in the frequency domain okay so this is so u comma v is equal to two minus u comma minus v and the imaginary is uh, means which is uh, we are taking the minus sign out f of u comma v and the real is even for this and odd for this and imaginary or reverse odd is this and even is this so this is r means real part i means imaginary part small f means uh, the original image we represented with f of x comma y in this way then Coming to another property of the 2D DFT is Fourier spectrum and phase angle. These two just you have to know. Okay, the Fourier spectrum and phase angle of the 2D DFT property. So, 2D DFT in polar form is given as f of u comma v is equal to absolute mod value of f of for u comma v e bar j phi of u comma v j phi of u comma v. Then for this polar, polar form, Fourier spectrum is defined as r square real part of u comma v plus i square imaginary part of u comma v whole power 1 by 2 this is Fourier spectrum formula remember simply then power spectrum power spectrum is represented with the p of uv Fourier spectrum is represented with the f of uv remember to give this absolute uh, this uh, lines representing the absolute mod values absolute values and power spectrum is defined as the square of this just the Fourier spectrum square is the power spectrum so this is square 
and this one by two getting cancelled then simply this is remaining one so r square of u uh, real part of uv plus imaginary part i square of uv phase angle now we are defining the phase angle how much we have to rotate that is phi of u comma b is phi of u comma b is equal to arc tan of imaginary part of u comma v by real part r of u comma v i of u comma v by r of u comma v okay now uh, by using fourier spectrum and uh, phase angle what are the outputs we will get what is the application of fourier spectrum and uh, what is the application of phase angle uh, property of the 2d dft now we will see with an uh, example see this example so this is the original image courtesy and this is the phase angle when we apply the property of phase angle means which we discussed here the phase angle when we apply that operation upon this image this is the phase angled uh, image result output then reconstruct this one using phase angle then you will get to somehow see a slide a slight woman images appearing then if we reconstruct this one using only spectrum means this formula then you will get the spectrum see this is the spectrum output then and uh, if you apply the uh, what is a reconstruction of a phase angle corresponding to the spectrum corresponding to rectangle so upon this spectrum if you, you apply the rectangle spectrum then you will see this image then if you reconstruct this one using phase of the rectangle of the spectrum then this is the spectrum image of uh, this one so these many modifications from this image we can get uh, by applying phase angles and uh, by the reconstruction then for that we are defining now the convolution 2d convolution theorem what is 2d convolution theorem before going to define the 2d convolution theorem we have to define the 1d convolution theorem which we already discussed which is expressed as f of x star h of x is equivalent to means it is expressed as sigma of m is equal to 0 to m minus 1 f of m h of x minus m this is the expression for 1d convolution so in the deep learning in the image process wherever you are applying you are using the word convolution there uh, this formula is uh, 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 this formula is applied behind that one so the convolution of 1d one dimensional this is the formula now for the 2d two dimensional convolution you have this formula f of x comma y into h of x comma y is equivalent to f of u v h of u v and from this and this also you already we already discussed this also we already discussed this is the reverse one f of x comma y h of x comma y is equivalent to f of u v star h of u v this one this is this is the 2d convolution okay then this is uh, represented with the uh, sigma sigma of m is equal to n is equal to 0 to m minus 1 n minus 1 where m and n are the size of the image uh, is 
f of m n into h of x minus m y minus n, x coordinate with x coordinate y coordinate with the y coordinate now i'll show the convolution examples uh, after applying convolution what is the uh, output we will get then see this uh, one so uh, the convolution of two discrete functions obtained using the approach we discussed in the previous slide then uh, we will get this one okay we applied upon this a convolution then this is the mirroring of a h here h is uh, this is the value of h here then from the origin if we apply the convolution then you are getting the output of this as like this and then from here to here you got the uh, mirroring h about the origin so at the origin this is the origin point so at the origin if you mirroring the h value this is the h value if you mirroring then this will from this side to it is convoluting into in this side and if you translating the mirrored function by x means some applying some x value discrete value then some x value then the resultant one the mirrored one you applied upon the mirrored one you applied some x value then some x value is moved to here this is the output and then if you compute the sum for each x upon this means f of x g of x start g of x then this is the output then from here then you will get uh, this one uh, it means you are from this it is causing the wrap around error this value from here to here this one wrap around value so a wrap around error is occurred at this place then it can be solved means any error is occurred then it can be solved by appending zeros the solution is appending zeros for what wrap around errors then you will get the uh, smooth and convolution operation then what is zero padding see the zero padding means so we have two functions within the example you have seen f of x and h of x and these are composed of a and b samples sample points a and b sample points respectively then append the zeros to both the functions f of x and z h of x so that they have the same length though you are appending zeros they have same length then that is the resultant one is de uh, denoted with the p then wrap around is awarded by choosing the value p is greater than or equal to a plus b minus one here you composed of a and b samples so a is a sample point b is a sample point uh, a is the sample point from x and b is the sample point from h of x minus one a plus b minus one choose this one then this is the zero padding now see the summary summary of the uh, dft so discrete fourier transform is represented by this formula we will discuss inverse discrete dft is represented with this formula 
uh, polar representation is this one spectrum representation is this one phase angle is this one formula power spectrum is this one then the summary of all the dft equations i'm showing here pause the video and see the formulas convolution correlation separability formulas are these expressed by means of these and the properties symmetry property linearity property is expressed by implemented by this formula the rotation the convolution theorem just now we discussed these are the formulas and other uh, properties of dft rectangle sine cosine and in the examination if you forget any equation just mention rectangle is there sine is there cosine is there for the dft correlation theorem okay impulse and impulse train gaussian okay now by using all these properties now we are defining uh, the basic filtering in the frequency domain in the frequency domain so by modifying the fourier transform of an image we are convert computing the inverse fourier transform so obtaining the processed result as g of x comma y this is the result which is denoted by the inverse transform which is do complement inverse of h of u comma v f of u comma v where f of u comma v is the dft discrete fourier transform of the input image h of u comma v is the filter function okay so whenever we represented h it is the filter function whenever it is a capital f this is the fourier transform discrete fourier transform whenever we represented i it is an imaginary part whenever we re represented r it is a real part whenever we represented small f it is the image original image then basic filtering examples applications now i'll show you see this is the basic filtering in the upon this uh, h of uv filtering operation uh, in the frequency domain so we applied some filtering operation upon this uh, then we used a is equal to 0 0.85 okay then if we used a is equal to 0. Uh, uh, 8 5 then this is the resulting filtering operation then suppose the height is equal to 0 and compare this one and this one and again a is equal to 0. 0.85 then this is the filtering operation result and i'll show you another example frequency domain here see this is the original image and if you apply Gaussian low pass filter padding, then this is the output. See, some values are changed here, some image is changed here and here. So, here result is blurring, blurring with the Gaussian low pass filter with the padding. And result of low pass filtering with the padding. And then the area is something changed into this one. In this way, the uh, when we apply the filtering operations in frequency domain, those are the uh, changes results we will get on the image. Then zero phase shift filters. The zero phase shift filter g of x comma y we already discussed discussed this uh, formula and you already know this one real part uh, called j and imaginary part then by 
these two you will get g of x y is equivalent to uh, do complement inverse of h of u v r of u v plus j of h of u v i of u v so the filters affect the real and imaginary parts equally and thus no effect on the phase so these filters are called zero phase shift filters so the filter effect the real and imaginary parts are equal and no effect no effect on the phase then it is a zero phase shift filters we call it i'll show an example for the zero phase shift filters see see this example is it is the original image phase angle is multiplied by a point five then upon this you will get to this see these values are blurred here then suppose even upon small changes in the phase angle can have dramatic undesirable effect on the filters output and if you multiply by 0.5 and apply the inverse dft then this is the output inverse dft okay with the phase angle 0.25 then this is the output so 0.5 this is the output 0.25 this is the output in this way uh, the non zero phase shift filters we can now uh, get the details we can change the details of the image this is the application now a summary of steps for filtering in the frequency domain what are the steps we have to follow in the frequency domain filtering so first uh, the given input image is f of x comma y of size m i m into n obtain the padding parameter p and q p is equal to 2m q is equal to 2n this m and n so first step is obtain the padding parameter p and q p value is 2m q is value is 2n and next step is form a padded image f of p x comma y of size p q this and this by appending the necessary number of zeros appending the zeros so this is the second step of filtering third step of filtering is multiply f of p of x comma y by minus 1 of x plus y to center its transform this is the so center point is uh, we are transforming by multiplying a uh, padded image with the minus 1 power x plus y then calculate the dft f of uv of the image from step 3 then generate a real symmetric filter function h of uv of size pq with the center coordinates p by 2 q by 2 are the center coordinates now generate a spatial filter add the spatial filter multiply uh, expanded array with the minus one x plus one and compute dft result is obtained at the center point and in the next step of the filtering is the next step form the product g of uv is equal to h of uv filtering and f of uv dft using ra multiplication okay ra multiplication next obtain the processed image which is a real operation upon the inverse of g of uv with the multiplication of this then obtain the final processed result g of x comma y by extracting m into n region from top left quadrant of g of x y so in these are the steps eight steps
total eight steps to do filtering in the frequency domain. Now I'll show you application example with images. So this is the original image. See upon this area, this part is occupied. So M by N size of image F. Then padded image of uh, this one of size PQ. Then this area is padded with this upon this. Then result of multiplying minus 1 power x plus 1. Then after multiplying, this is the output. Then spectrum of f of p is generated by this. After generating spectrum of f of p, center Gaussian low pass filter generated h value of a p into q. Then spectrum of the product of these two given this value spectrum. Then product is a cal uh, pro uh, the result is a, uh, multiplied producted with the minus 1 of x plus 1. This is the resultant one. From that apply inverse Fourier transform. This is the output of inverse Fourier transform. This is the application of the uh, steps we discussed uh, filtering in the frequency domain. Then uh, correspondence between filtering in the spatial domain and in the frequency domain. What is the correspondence between filtering in the spatial and frequency domain means H of U denoting one dimensional frequency domain Gaussian filter which is uh, expressed as A E power minus U square by 2 uh, sigma uh, square variance variance square. The corresponding filter in the spatial domain is uh, extra multiplied by root 2 pi into variance. Okay. So both the components are Gaussian and real. So this function is behaving reciprocally. Okay. Then from that function uh, we are defining denoting the H of U and here I show you an example for the correspondence between uh, uh, filtering in spatial and frequency domain. See, this is the one dimensional Gaussian uh, low pass filter in the frequency domain. Then, spatial uh, low pass filter for this corresponding one is this one spatial low pass filter applied upon this and See, this is the Gaussian high pass filter applied uh, in the frequency domain. Then this one becomes in this way. So these are changed. These coefficients are changed like this after applying these formulas Gaussian and spatial filters. Then spatial high pass filter. Uh, corresponding to this as giving the resultant one this then see this is the uh, coefficients changed within the uh, image then i'll show an example image uh, see this is the 600 by 600 image of building and it's a spectrum you can see the spectrum of that image as look like this. Now in this board we will discuss uh, discrete Fourier transforms, 2D impulse and shift property in a continuous and in a discrete we discussed and we also discussed 2D Fourier transform in a continuous and in a discrete 
and today sampling analyzing more patterns we discussed inverse 2d dft and uh, uh, 2d dft also we discussed phase angle 2d convolution and zero padding filtering in the frequency domain zero phase shift filters non zero phase shift filters are also we discussed and correspondence between filtering in spatial and uh, frequency domain also we discussed in the next board we will discuss uh, image smoothing image smoothing using filter okay ideal low pass filter we will discuss in the next board see you in the next board.